so today I was checking out a situation with the Wildlife Rescue of the University of Illinois and I had the good pleasure of meeting two students from that program who were kind enough to come out to look over a situation with three or four geese that have been injured in their life cycle. One of the things I discovered later in the afternoon was that one of the geese we thought might be better this morning was actually not the geese that I was or the goose that I was concerned about. The coolness of it is that that goose was so feverishly hungry that she was literally coming right to me because she knows me, she trusts me, and she was really coming quite quickly. The other good news is that she is being able to eat a little bit better, but she still has this monstrous zip tie that some ugly human being put on her lower lip, which makes it hard for her to get food in her mouth and hard for her to swallow, and it means that she's losing weight, and that's why she's feverishly hungry. We have to be very careful about what we throw out today. We have to be very careful what we do to wildlife today because God in heaven is not going to be pleased if you're an abuser of anyone, any animal of any kind today. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, but what's really cool about this goose and what I sort of felt like God was saying to me earlier today is that I should have kept the animal keeper that was offered to by me by the university, but I just wasn't sure how I was going to be able to transport it because in those moments of time, that goose that we like to lovingly call Sally kept coming right up to me, literally right between my legs. So today I did something a little bit unique that I never recommend and I don't think is appropriate, but I just wanted to check if she'd let me touch her or not because of how close she was coming today compared to yesterday in terms of being able to feed her. Now I'm quite accustomed to them taking food out of my fingers and sometimes taking my fingers off in their feverishness, but I'm always cautious of that because of course you know there's avian flu and other things like poo that we don't really want to deal with. But what I did find was that she would let me touch her a little bit, but I don't recommend that in general because we're not supposed to touch wildlife. And I have no gloves right now, so I can't put them on to even do it right. If I was going to touch one, like when I found that sparrow that someone had basically poisoned and thrown out the window and then God revived it right there in front of me, I wore gloves so that I wouldn't harm it and I wouldn't give it any tainting if it had a family that would be very sensitive to humans' smell on a, a little bird like that. But at any rate, I thought it was kind of cool that she would let me touch her a little bit, that she would come that close, and I probably could have shoved her right into a carrier so they could have taken her off and performed the little uh, thing they needed to do, which was to cut that uh, thing off. At the same time, because of the way she was approaching me, someone who didn't know her as well could stand behind her and push her into the carrier or basically get a hold of her, and we could have helped her immediately to be able to feed again. So that was pretty cool. And I am just this guy who loves to watch them and loves to listen to them and find them just kind of fascinating the way that they articulate in their way. I'd almost call it fairly glue sticks today, but as you know, they're not human. And uh, we just like to be fun with that. But it's really kind of fascinating to listen to the variety of sounds and kind of just guess and observe through Embarrico data what those sounds mean amongst them.